Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because we are going to be talking about my 2022 product favorites. I went to go back to last year's like yearly favorites roundup and I don't think I did one. I didn't want to repeat the products that I had been talking about, uh, but I don't think I talked about anything last year. So I'm gonna talk about my products that I absolutely loved this year and probably honestly in 2021 too for a couple of these because apparently I didn't do one. So um, I have a lot to talk about. I have this really big bin. I have one product that is actually on my worst of 2022 list. But other than that, everything that I've tried for the most part has been pretty good. There have been one or two things where I'm like, eh, this isn't a great product, but it's not a terrible product. You know what I mean? But I only tried one actual product that I really didn't like this year. So that's pretty good. So since I have so many products to talk about, let's just get right into it. I'm gonna first get these out of the way because they're like really big and taking up a lot of space. These are, ooh, these are my Ariana Grande fragrances. I have God is a Woman and Cloud. My God is a Woman, I just got for Christmas, but I'm already obsessed with it. I really enjoy it. The notes I mainly get from this are like pear. It's like very fruity, a little bit musky, maybe. Mm, I don't really know, but very sweet. I really like sweet scents. I like sweet vanillas and sweet fruity scents. I don't really want to smell musky or smoky or maybe smoky if it's like paired with a sweet vanilla but you know what i mean like i don't really like things that are super masculine or gender neutral i don't even really like fresh like i like fruity but i don't want it to be straight citrus because that leans too fresh for me anyway it doesn't matter uh but this one is cloud and i got this one uh around this time last year actually this one's like lavender vanilla coconut i don't smell the lavender because i'm not well i do but it's like subtle to me it's not straight lavender but it does add like a floral aspect to it so you don't just smell like straight up like vanilla coconut which i feel like can kind of be a little bit like childish almost if that makes sense so the lavender adds like a nice component to it but i really like this i wore it quite a bit i'm gonna spray a bit of this right now just because I already have on something vanilla already and I don't think that God is a woman would pair as nicely. Um, but yeah, you know, I do like some like depth to my fragrances, but I don't really like anything too floral or too fresh or too anything else besides sweet. So that's why I've really liked these because Ariana Grande just does, you know, really nice scents. Yeah, that's all I really have to say about these two. I've been wearing them a lot. They're cruelty free. I'm pretty sure they're vegan, so that's great. And cruelty free is really hard to find in the fragrance world, so that was important. So yeah, these I've really been enjoying. Speaking of fragrance, my husband got me this candle. It's a Canadian candle company. It's called Mala the Brand. My friend had one of these. We went to go visit her and I couldn't stop smelling it, so he got me one for Christmas. It's called, oh, that was too close. It's called Cereal and it just smells like Fruit Loops. And I don't even really like Fruit Loops, but I'm really obsessed with the scent of them. Yum. Oh no, I just blew it out. Shit. There we go. But yeah, I usually don't like Fruit Loops, but ever since that candle came into my life, um, I had to get my husband to pick me up a box because that candle makes me crave Fruit Loops. Anyway, moving on. That's not a favorite because I just got it for Christmas, but like I have been enjoying. Next up, this is kind of a fragrance. I really like it because of the fragrance. I just love this product in general. I don't know what possessed me to buy this product because I tried the cream last year and I really didn't like it, but this is the Bomb Dia Bright Clarifying AHA BHA Body Wash. Clarifying Body Wash. I don't even know what this scent is supposed to be. It's vanilla and like a fruit of some sort, but this smells so good. Like this smells incredible. This is what I wanted the cream to smell like. I don't know why, but the cream smells different and the cream lingers on my skin differently to the point where it made me nauseous. This smells delightful. I'm obsessed. It has kept the skin on my body rather clear. I just really like it. I like the scent. I like the size. It's a little expensive. I don't know if I would repurchase it right away. Like if I'm in a tight financial spot, I probably wouldn't repurchase this right away. But I do feel so luxurious using this. And it's like definitely one of those treat products where if I'm feeling down, I'm gonna, gonna reach for this. And it just makes me feel better. So like definitely this is more of an indulgence for me, but 100% worth it. Like so good. I'm gonna give it one more sniff. I wish they had a candle. I think they have a body spray in this. I'm sad that the body cream didn't work out for me. Like it smelled really different from this. Anyway, I'm obsessed with this. I love, love, love it. And speaking of keeping my body acne clear, this is the Paula's Choice Acne Spray with 2% salicylic acid for blemish prone skin. 
I struggle with body breakouts, not as much on my face, but on my like chest and back, I kind of struggle with it. So this is a really nice way to, you know, make sure that you get that skincare on your body. You literally just spray it on. Like it could not be easier. I spray it on after the shower and it's just like their toner, but in a spray bottle. So I just refill it with their toner sometimes. Well, not sometimes, but very often, because then I can use whatever's remaining of the toner on my face. So it's kind of a dual product and like you can get in those hard to reach areas like your back and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's great. I really really like this product. I have a lot of Paula's Choice in here. I also have a lot of Fenty. Those are my two brands of 2022. I've talked about this so many times but the Paula's Choice Moisture Boost Hydrating Treatment Cream for Normal to Dry Skin. Amazing. I use this as an eye cream. I use it as a face cream. This mixed in with a little bit of oil. So good. My skin just loves this product and it feels so good whenever I use it so I can't live without this. I truly cannot. And it's like reasonably priced and it's not animal tested. Like there's so many good things I could say about this, but yeah, I cannot say enough good things about this product. This was definitely hands down one of my faves of the year and 2021 as well. Another one that I discovered, I think this year, and I'm obsessed with it. This is the Paula's Choice Intensive Wrinkle Repair Retinol Serum with Licorice and Kelp. This is almost like an oily type serum. Like it doesn't feel like a normal retinol, but it is lovely. My skin looks so gorgeous and glowing the morning after I use this. This one's empty, so I have to pick up another one, but oh my God. This I discovered in 2022 and it is a new go-to for me. And it's like a bonus that it has retinol in it. I use it for the way my skin feels in the morning, but it also is like an anti-aging product, which is incredible. I think this is my last skincare product. The rest is makeup. This is by Youth to the People. It's the Super Berry Dream Cleansing Balm. I really like this. It's amazing. It doesn't have any fragrance, which is why I prefer this to the um, Pharmacy Green Clean. The Pharmacy Green Clean smells very, I think it's citrusy. This smells like nothing, which is great. I've been trying to reduce the amount of fragrance in my uh, skincare products. Besides body products, I love like my body to smell good, but my face, no thanks. So yeah, this just melts off all of my makeup so easily. And yeah, it's just a great cleansing balm that doesn't have fragrance. So I really enjoy. Now moving on to makeup, woohoo. I have a lot of blush this year. Who would have known? I'm gonna get these out of the way because they're taking up a lot of space. So I'm gonna talk about lashes. The first style that I've really been enjoying, and this is on myself and on other people, the Ardell Foam Ink 817s. I am obsessed. These are so pretty. I love these lashes when I'm looking to open up the eye. It gives like a very pretty doll eye effect. If I'm not going for a cat eye, these are what I reach for. I also don't have them with me, but the Faux Mink Wispies are fantastic as well. And they're a little bit shorter, so if you have smaller Lids, those ones are great. I just don't have a set on me. So the 817s, the Faux Mink Wispies, as well as the Kiss Lashes in the style Jubilee. These are fantastic. If you want something more dramatic that is in a cat eye shape, these are just so perfect for that kind of look. I'm wearing them today because it's New Year's Eve. So this is the New Year's Eve glam that I'm probably gonna take off before midnight, so. Anyway, yeah, for people with larger eyelid space and for someone who's wanting something more dramatic, I love these. And lastly, if I'm going for like super, super natural on somebody, I don't use these on myself, but I've gone through these like water on other people. So these are the Ardell Faux Mink um, individuals. I currently only have short black ones. Um, I do also use the medium black, but they're like impossible to find right now. So, but these are so good. You can kind of custom make your own lash look. You can put like the shorter ones in the inner corner, which I always do anyway, and then like taper them out to be longer, or you could put the longer ones in the center. It's totally up to you. You can create your own lash look. You can layer these on top of each other if you want something more dramatic. And these are just so much more comfortable for those who don't wear lashes that often. Like if I'm doing a wedding, these are perfect for mother of the brides who aren't used to wearing any type of lashes. They just give them a little bit of a pop, you know, while still being quite comfortable. Okay, what should I move on to next? I don't know, I'll just go with whatever. For foundation, this one I found this year that I really did love. This is the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation, Hyaluronic Acid and Long Wear. This is in the shade Neutral Porcelain 004. Uh, it probably won't match me now, it's probably a bit too dark, but this formula is very beautiful. It is very hydrating, it does kind of look like a very dewy skin finish, which I've personally been loving this year, and it's long wearing. You used to like not be able to find the two, like a foundation that's not super matte, but is still long wearing. It used to be really hard to find, and now you can find it at the drugstore. Even though drugstore prices are not like real drugstore prices anymore. That's a discussion for another day though. Long story short, I really did love this foundation, especially in the summer. Ooh, microplastic particle free. Well, that's kind of good. There's probably so many microplastics in makeup that you just don't even think of. Uh, this is great 
I just wish it had a better shade range. That's the only thing. So that's the only foundation. Um, obviously the Beauty Blender Bounce, but I feel like I talk about that one so much that like, whatever. But if you're wondering if I still love that one, yes, I very much do. This was my highlighter of the year as it always kind of is. This is the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder in the shade Highlight 01. I finally finished my little tiny sample size and I got this size that I kind of use on myself as well as in my kit. It's just such a pretty highlighter. It's like not glittery at all. It just is really stunning and it's like more of a natural glow, like natural, like you can still tell you're wearing highlighter, but it's just like I don't know, so much more natural in comparison to other things on the market. I feel like the new Rare Beauty highlighters kind of remind me of this, like they're kind of dome shaped. So I really wanna try those ones cause they look so beautiful, but they've been sold out for a while. So I do wanna try those Rare Beauty ones this year. Leave in the comments down below if you've gotten to try them. Uh, but for this year, the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance is the best. Let's get through some of the Fenty stuff cause I have a lot of Fenty. This first product is the Fenty Cream Bronzer. This is in the shade Butter Biscuit. I absolutely love this. Another Fenty product that I really like, but it's in my makeup kit. Um, the Match Sticks in the shade Soft Amber. Gorgeous, gorgeous contour for very fair skin. But for bronzer, I definitely prefer the Butter Biscuit and I also prefer for the cream bronzer formula as opposed to the matchsticks formula. This is fantastic, I'm obsessed. Ironically, I'm not wearing it today um, just because I wanted to try out some other bronzing products that I've been testing out. So also, I feel like this is kind of cheating because I got it in November, but I just, I've been using it so much and I am obsessed. This is the Fenty Beauty Double Cheeked Up Freestyle Cream Blush Duo. It's just a cream blush duo. I think it's so good. I mentioned it in one of my previous videos talking about like new makeup launches and I was like, oh, I really wanna try that. And I was sent it in PR. So incredibly lucky, like it's crazy. And these are the two shades. I love both of them. I have been getting slightly more use out of the brighter pink shade, but I use both of them and they are both so lovely. The formula on these is absolutely beautiful. It makes me really wanna try her, um, you know, usual cream blushes. But I currently cannot justify that purchase just yet. So I'm going to continue loving on uh, the ones that I currently have. A couple more products from Fenty that launched this year that I'm absolutely obsessed with. And I was sent the whole line and I'm so grateful, but I've also purchased these on my own. so you know I love them. Uh, these are the Fenty lipsticks. The one I'm wearing today is called Skull Assista. It's probably my favorite. So pretty. They have the peach vanilla, or is it apricot vanilla? I don't know what their scent is, but it has the same scent as the gloss bombs. This formula is so beautiful. It's like a satin, but like a glossy satin finish. This is the other shade that I have in my personal collection. Um, it's called Mother Lover. It's a very pretty light peachy nude. Gorgeous. I use both of these shades on myself the most, but I also use them on a lot of clients and they look good on so many different people. Another lip product, this is by Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Lip Cheat Reshape and Resize Lip Liner in the shade Iconic Nude. It's a very beautiful lip liner. I use this mostly for my kit, but I do really enjoy it. I'll give you a little swatch for you. I haven't swatched literally anything in this video except for this and the highlighter, just realizing that. It's just such a beautiful brownish nude shade. If Pillow Talk is too pink for for you, that is the one I would recommend. It's so gorgeous. Not a ton to say about it. Uh, it's a really solid formula, very long wearing. I use it on a lot of brides and yeah. Another lipstick that I was obsessed with this year, I feel kind of bad because it's not available anymore. Colourpop just discontinues too much stuff. This was released with the Of Quartz collection and this is the lippy sticks in the shade Best Intentions. This is just such a beautiful color. It's like a rosy nude again. Um, I'm obsessed with these shades. This is just such a beautiful color and I wore it so much this year, especially kind of in that transition from summer to fall kind of period and early fall. I was obsessed with this shade. It's so good. I'm sorry you can't get it, but it's a good one. I have a couple brow products and they're both from the drugstore. I tried the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen and I wasn't sure about it at first because it seemed like a really dark color. I got the shade Soft Brown and for the longest time I thought I had the wrong one. Like I thought they labeled it wrong or something, but this is just such a skinny pen. It provides really nice hair-like strokes. I use it to really define my arch, like with a really crisp line. It's my favorite, I love it so much. And I also have been really enjoying the e.l.f. Brow Lift. It's supposed to be a dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. I don't think I'd spend that much on the brow freeze because I don't love the laminated look. I think the laminated brow look is something we're gonna look back on and be like, oh, what the hell were we thinking? But I do really enjoy the e.l.f. Brow Lift as like a really, you know, heavy duty brow gel. Obviously I don't brush up my brow hairs, but they keep them in place really, really well. So I have been obsessed with this and it's affordable. Okay, sorry, my camera died, so I had to go charge it. I feel like I'm off center now. 
Ugh, I don't even know what I was talking about. Let's just move on to the next product. For eye products, I surprisingly only have two. I have this Bare Minerals Mineralist Eyeliner in the shade Onyx. This is such a beautiful eyeliner. It glides on super easily and stays on for a really long time. So I love this. I can only use it in my personal collection because it's like a mechanical like roll up situation, but that's fine. And then the Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara. This is such a good mascara. Like so, so good. I think one of my all time faves. It separates the lashes so beautifully. It stays on forever. I just really, really like this. And it's been my favorite for quite a long time. Okay, the rest I have are just lips and cheeks. This has kind of been the year for blush for me. My first favorite is the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in the shade Happy. This formula went super viral on TikTok this year. I've had this since Rare Beauty launched. I went and picked it up. I don't know why, but I really love it. It's so beautiful. You only need a tiny bit because it's super pigmented so one of these will last forever and I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a dupe of it and I actually really enjoyed it this is by Quo Beauty it's a Canadian beauty brand I don't think you can get these in the states but maybe you could uh, this is the featherweight cream blush in the shade angelic you can get these at shoppers and they're decently priced anyway this is a very nice blush and I would highly recommend it both of these you can see what my favorite blush color is I'm very much a pink blush kind of girl. So this blush I'm currently wearing and I've used this so much this year. This is the Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Powder Blush in the shade Mellow Mauve. I'm wearing it today. It's so, so beautiful. It gives that really gorgeous pink flush to the cheek and the formula is super good. I just, I love this blush, especially on clients, especially on fair skin. I just think it's so, so beautiful. And the formula is really long wearing, so I love that. And finally, this is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude powder blush. This is in the shade Call My Blush and I just really love this formula as well. <laughs> All of these colors look almost identical. Uh, you can tell that I'm a fan of a certain blush shade. I think this one is a little more cool toned, like a true mauve, and this one has a little bit more of a warmth to it, uh, but they're both super beautiful colors. They actually perform fairly similarly. I think the Mario one just has a little bit of a sheen. Nothing like NARS Orgasm or anything like that, like not a super intense sheen, because I do like a matte blush, but just a little bit of luminosity that this one doesn't have. This one's a true matte. And lastly, we have lip products. I absolutely love this product. This is the Buxom Plump Shot Collagen Infused Lip Serum. If my lips are dry, I don't know why, but this actually makes them feel a lot better, which is weird because usually when your lips are dry, they're like a little bit uncomfortable. So you would think that the last thing you want to do is add something that's going to like plump them and make them even more uncomfortable. But something about this just makes my lips feel so soft afterwards. It's definitely not the collagen. I don't believe in like applying collagen to the skin. I don't think it has any benefits, but something about that just makes it so nice once that tingle wears off. It's just super moisturizing afterwards. I also love, love, love this Fenty Gloss Balm Ice. It smells like a pack of five gum. Like this mint is so intense. So lovely. Cooling minty glosses are like some of my all time faves. So I think this is fantastic. And again, sometimes when my lips are tapped, you know, they're very irritated and uncomfortable. And I find the mint just provides such a nice cooling sensation that I like completely forget about it. And it provides some like moisturizing benefits. I'm sure there's some good ingredients in there. For color gloss, this is the Bare Minerals Mineralist Lip Gloss Balm in the shade Heart. I love this. This is such a nice gloss. It smells really nice. It's sheer. It's not sticky because it's like a gloss bomb hybrid. It kind of smells like a pink Starburst or something. Like it's just such a nice product. And now I'm gonna regret getting the applicator all dirty, but it's fine. It's just such a nice moisturizing balm. I keep all of these in my purse. These are the four products that I use the most. I just went straight to my purse. I didn't even go into my makeup bag. If I keep it in my purse, that's when you know I really love it. It does fade rather quickly, but other than that, the formula is fantastic. I don't mind reapplying and everything else about the formula is just absolutely lovely. Okay, lastly, I wanna talk about this lip balm by CoverGirl. This is the Clean Fresh Tinted Lip Balm with Hyaluronic Acid in the shade Bliss You Berry. It doesn't really have a scent. Um, it's a very dark color. This is meant to dupe the Clinique Black Honey, which is why I initially got it because Clinique is not cruelty free and CoverGirl is now. And this was like $10 as opposed to the Black Honey lipsticks probably a lot more. As you can tell, I'm really into hydrating lip products and I love that this provides a tint. So um, I feel like I can wear it with a makeup look and not feel totally crazy. I can just slap this on and have the look not look incomplete, if that makes sense. 
I would definitely be interested in getting a couple more colors of this. I find it just completes a look really nicely while still being very comfortable because it is more of a sheer bomb. So yeah, I carry this in my purse to reapply if I'm wearing like a full makeup look. And even when I'm not, like it doesn't look insane because it is so sheer. It's just a really, really versatile product that I've been absolutely loving. And for the product that I hated this year, this is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. I got the shade... Meringue 2.1 N Luminous Matte. I thought this was going to be like a groundbreaking concealer for me. This creases like nothing else. Like it cakes up in like this area. Don't get me wrong, it also creases in like my more deep set creases that are like under here. But very rarely will something crease like out here for me. Cause you know, like I'm only 27, my crow's feet like wrinkles are not that deep yet. But this settles into those fine lines. I've never felt or looked older than when I use this concealer. It's so bad. So I originally tested it out because I thought it would be so fantastic for my kit. But like the longevity of this is just not there. It creases so quickly like within a couple hours so I was really disappointed with this and honestly I've been saving this product for this video and after this it's gonna go straight in the trash and I feel very bad about it but there's just no hope for this concealer like at all I've tried everything so yeah uh, this one was a really big fail for me but you know out of all of the products I've tried having only one fail it's a pretty good record and that is everything for this video please leave in the comments down below what your favorite products of 2022 were my cat Debbie just barged her way in here to let me know that it is almost dinner time so I better go feed her or else I'm going to hear about it. Thank you guys so much for sticking around this year. Even though I was posting less frequently in 2022 than I did in 2021, uh, just because I had so many other things on the go, 2021 was still very much a pandemic year. So, you know, I didn't have a lot going on and I still really love to film. I just have less time to do it now. So thank you so much for sticking around and still watching my videos. I really appreciate you. And I will see you guys all in my next video in 2023. I can't wait to see what is in store for this channel. I love you guys and happy new year. Bye.